Lately, the film community has been abuzz with exciting talk of some upcoming color film stock releases. Kodak is putting out Gold 200 in medium format, Cinestill is launching a 400 ISO color negative film, Japan Camera Hunter is rolling out Fugu Film, a new color slide film, Adox is working towards new color film which has been teased through the release of their Adox color mission film, and Orwell has said that they're working on a new color cinema film. This video has nothing to do with any of that, but it's always good to draw people in with the hottest news. Don't get me wrong, color film is great and some of the best color film stocks that have ever existed exist right now. But such a big part of film photography are the massive amount of different black and white film stocks that are out there. And today I'm highlighting another one with Rolly Superpan 200. Last year I talked about Rolly Retro 80, a high contrast, fine grain 80 ISO black and white film made by Rolly. Well, not exactly. All these Rolly films have the really recognizable Rolly brand name on them, but it's pretty much just that, a brand name at this point. And all of these films really have nothing to do with all those classic high quality Rolly cameras from the past. These films are all produced by Agva Gervat in Belgium and then distributed in the roles we load into our cameras by Mako Direct in Germany. Agva used to produce a lot of different films, including color stuff, but doesn't really do that anymore and the company has changed in the last number of decades. Today, Agva Gervat produces technical films that are used in areas such as aerial photography and archival work. And Mako in Germany takes some of these specialized films and distributes them for more general uses. Rolly Superpan 200 is the same kind of film stock as a previous Agfa film called Agfa Avifat 200. And Superpan 200 is also the successor to the discontinued but previously very popular black and white reversal film called Agfa Scala 200. So if you're into black and white reversal processing in order to achieve a positive image on your film, then Superpan 200 is apparently some of the best for that process. I shot and developed a role of Superpan 200 just as a black and white negative, so let's take a look at some of that, and I'll also touch on some of its more unique attributes. Rolly Superpan 200 is a 200 ISO black and white negative film that gives you a pretty high contrast. It's got the really deep black areas and bright highlights, and this is largely due to it being a technical film, something that in the past would have been made for scientific, medical, and military applications, like x-ray and surveillance stuff. Films like this are noticeably different from something like Tri-X and HP5, which have a less intense curve to it for contrast and are generally more flexible. My results with Superpan have a pretty standard amount of grain to it. It's not particularly fine grain, but it also doesn't feel overly grainy for its 200 ISO either. I just think the grain characteristic isn't anything super noteworthy for this stuff. I do like most of my shots on this roll, and the contrast gives that nice kind of punchy and textured look when walking around the city, but I do think that Super Pan overall is nothing super spectacular. I would recommend exposing maybe a little over the box speed of 200 if you want to hold on to more shadow detail because that does get lost pretty easily, or just really be careful of what you're exposing for in your scene. It's a look that's very in line with most other technical films. JCH 3 Pan 400, Santa Ray 1000, Rolly Retro 400, Rolly Retro 80. All of these films have a lot in common with each other with their contrast and their flexibility. I think of these kinds of films, I prefer the super smooth contrasty results on the lower ISO Rolly Retro 80 for something that does stand out a bit more. I developed the Super Pan in Ilford's ID11 developer stock solution for 10 minutes based on Rolly's website but it probably could have gone maybe just a little bit longer with it. They recommend Rolly Supergrain Developer, which I haven't used before, and I also can't get that easily locally, but that's described as a fine grain developer, so you can probably achieve some better results using that for Superpan. As I mentioned, Superpan 200 is very well suited for reversal developing to achieve a black and white positive. This film is coated on a very clear polyester base, where many standard films have a denser base to it. Films with a clear base like this often make for better reversal processing, and the packaging even advertises this for the film. Besides its reversal potential though, Superpan also has infrared sensitivity. This means that it is sensitive to wavelengths beyond 700 nanometers in the light spectrum, and with a proper R72 filter, can be used for black and white infrared photos. I shot this stuff as a negative because a lot of people are just going to pick it up and shoot it and develop it as a negative, and this is what you're going to get unless you go out of your way to do something a little bit different with it. Blue Moon Camera Codex 
has a nice write-up on using this stuff for infrared and a little more explanation on that side of things for the super pan. So check the link in the description below for some more details on that. Super Pan treated as a regular black and white film isn't a bad film. I just think that there are other films similar to it that I like a little bit more. Things like Retro 80, as I mentioned before. And really, I think I'm more likely to kind of either step things up to a 400 ISO or go down to a 100 ISO as opposed to going for like the 200 option. FOMA makes a decent 200 ISO film and Ilford has SFX 200, which is also suitable for infrared photography. So these three are some of the only 200 ISO black and white stocks widely available. I would likely revisit this film for one of its more specialized purposes though. Samples of it in infrared look really interesting and I have yet to tackle black and white infrared film and like photography stuff on this channel yet. Mainly because I just haven't bought an R72 filter yet. But uh, when I do, I will definitely keep Super Pan 200 in mind. But I have explored black and white reversal developing, and it's a very intensive and sometimes difficult process depending on how you do it. So hopefully in the future, if I'm mixing up those chemicals again, then Super Pan 200 is one that I'd really like to see the results of. Also worth noting here is that this is a pretty physically thin film, thinner than your standard Kodak and Fuji stock. So of course, be careful when you're loading it onto developing reels in case it kind of hits a snag and gets damaged. But also important to keep in mind is that the base is polyester, which pulls in more light. So it's not uncommon to have a bit of light sneak in while handling and loading this stuff in really bright areas. And you'll see this around the sprocket holes, especially over the first few frames. And that can kind of bleed into your images. This is called light piping. And it's also something to be aware of if you have old crusty foam lights seals in your camera that need to be replaced. So maybe skip this stuff if you're just kind of looking for a black and white negative stock to play around with. It's fine as a high contrast stock, but I think the real appeal of it lies in using it for infrared or reversal processing. If those are things that interest you though, then maybe Rolly Super Pan 200 is the film for you. Hey, I completely forgot to record an outro for that video. So uh, thank you so much for checking this out. I hope that you enjoyed and uh, let me know your thoughts on any of the Rolly film stocks, what your favorites are, what you think of Super Pan, if you've shot it in infrared or if you've developed it as reversal, interested to hear about that and uh, share some of your experiences around in the comments below. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, you can also do that through uh, links in the description below. There's the Patreon and there's also a little bit of merch. Uh, so that stuff just goes a long way in helping out to support the channel. There's also a PO box address if you've got some interesting stuff that you want to send along. Um, and as always, uh, thanks so much. I'll see you soon. Also, Patreon shoutouts for the month. Uh, thank you to everybody who has supported and continues to support the channel. Alexander Savin, Anthony Tantillo, Babic Montemetti, Benjamin MacArthur, Brian DeMartin, Carly Baker, Carson Fuller, Charlie and Chris, Charlie Acola, Chaz Allen, Chris Baltiera, Celluloid Alchemist, Colin Larkin, Colin Jackson, Civilis, Dan Silvestri, Darren Martone, David Kelsey, Derek Konigsberg, Django Scarupa, Elizabeth Vaselli, Georgia Nass, Juliana LaPetalina, Ian Farber, Ian Frank, Jack, Jeff Yoakum, Jeremy Lee Camp, Jordan White, Song, Larry O, Mark Lentz, Matt Curon, Olivia Orlando Perez, Paul Snow, Scott Vansel, Sparkle Ops, Steve Miller, Taylor Brown, Thomas Wibley, and Tony Graham. And an extra special shout out to Babic Montemetti, Carson Feller, Larry O, Tony Graham, and Taylor Brown for the added support on the Patreon.